Hi, this is Not Without Blood. My name is Leroy Herring, and we're so appreciative of you being with us tonight for sharing your time with us, for taking part of your daily Bible study to uh, maybe join us in, in our Bible study. We thank you for the time that you give us. We appreciate it, and we do not take it lightly. As we have been uh, speaking uh, the last week on some five graces in, in Romans chapter uh, 6, 11 through 13. Uh, Pastor Darrell Little uh, helped me a, a tremendous amount last week as we went through a, a little bit of that and we got it kicked off. Uh, he will be here later on in the week. But tonight uh, I would like to introduce a, a person that is a friend of mine that is going to be on uh, several of the programs. Uh, Dr. Michael Lee, he owns uh, Destiny TV in uh, the Panhandle of Florida. He has a, a Christian stations there that uh, we are fortunate enough to be on also. So, uh, Michael, we uh, thank you very much for being with us and appreciate in advance your uh, insight. Uh, as I know, it's going to be great, it as it be. always is. Great, we appreciate it. So, I'm going to start off by looking at a scripture in Galatians, and then we're going to go back to Romans chapter 6. But in Galatians chapter 2, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer that I, the old me, the old self that lives, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by him. And then in verse 21, he talks about the grace that he was given was not given in vain. And the reason I'm starting there, how did Paul get to the point that he could say, I am crucified in Christ? And that's part of what we are going to be discussing for several programs. How do we get to that point in our own life that we can also say that I am crucified. Because I'm sure Paul went through a process. Mm -hmm. He had to go through a process. And part of this process, obviously, is not just the book of Romans, which is one of the, the most important books in the Bible as far as understanding the gospel, but particularly in Romans 6. Uh, if, you, if we now turn to our scripture that we'll be using... And it's uh, Romans 6, verse 11, and we'll start there. And he says, For the death that he died, in verse 10, I'm going to start with verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Next verse, verse 11. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Uh, Michael, from your experience as pastoring and doing evangelistic work, could you say that most people try to produce the death to sin within themselves by their own power? Oftentimes, and it's probably because they've been taught that, and, and we've even all, I say we, Christendom at large, often approaches it as if this is something we've got to do mm. within ourself. Right. Um, although it's important to note there will be a change. There's an obvious change in our life, but mm -hmm. that change was bought and paid for at the atonement. Right. I mean, there's nothing we can do to bring about that change other than through faith, like we get our right. salvation, we get our righteousness. Right. As a matter of fact, healing and salvation was on the same invoice. Right. And Jesus paid it all. And he right. paid it before we ever got sick. Right. So he also paid it before we ever sick. Well, he actually, in the mind of God, paid it before 
foundation of the earth. Absolutely. Uh, paid it in eternity. I like advance payments. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> do too. Uh, if you've ever been in small business like I am, <laughs> you, love you, you love it. Uh, but this is a, another thing, and, and as I had mentioned to you before, uh, to me, the church is always trying to fight an enemy that has already been defeated and that. is trying to complete a work that's already been finished. And when we try to defeat sin in our life ourselves, we're trying to complete a work that Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. Because he says, you know, what's the first one? Believe you are dead to your sin nature and alive to God. Just because it's true, if I don't believe it's true for me, it's not going to have any effect on me, is it? That's right. That's exactly right. We have to have the faith to believe that he did this for us. Correct. We also have to look at death the same way we look at life. There's nothing we can do in our life to live the abundant life if we don't believe in the abundant life. So right. we have to step into that life and then walk it out in faith. Mm -hmm. and, there, and I noticed, and I wanted to point out when you was reading in Galatians, All right. one of the things that's important that he speaks of in verse 20 he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, right. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And then he says something, the life which I now, now live. live. That indicates that there was a life that he used to live. Correct. And now there's a life that he now lives. So right. there is a difference in the two lives. But that, that I now live in the flesh, mm -hmm. I live, this is the difference, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. By him just saying, now live, he is denoting that there has to be a change. Absolutely. Amen. That there's a change in the heart, and it's going to be shown to other people by their experience with us mm -hmm. on a daily basis of how, they, how I interact with you or somebody else, how I interact with them. If I'm going to profess Christ, they better see a change. Absolutely. When I, when I lived my life before, I lived it by force. Right. You know, I lived it by what I could provide, what I could produce, what I, I, I. Right. But now I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So now I'm living by faith and not by force. I don't have to make it happen anymore. I can just rejoice in the life that he's given me, and I'm walking in this new life, and I'm literally, we'll talk about, dead to trespasses mm -hmm. and sin. Well, Paul is... Plain in here in Galatians 2.20, he says, I have been crucified. The I, mm -hmm. the, the I, the self-effort, the, the willpower that I tried to generate, everything else, the, the me, that part, the old man, has to be crucified if I'm going to have a new life in Christ. Absolutely. He talks a lot about the renewing of the mind. And that's where religion kind of, gets back into it sometimes because they look at renewing of the mind as, as, and putting away you know, th these other things as these deeds that I have to quit doing and then now there's deeds that I start doing. Start, right. And so I'm, I've just exchanged one set of deeds for another set of deeds. But that's really not what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. The renewing mm -hmm. of the mind is to renew it from the carnality to the mind of faith. Right. So now my mind is a mind of faith and so I'm believing God for the things that I need, I believe, yes, I still go through my life. I'm living my life in this mortal body, and, I, and we'll touch on that in a minute too. But, but I'm also living by faith, as, I, as he mentioned in Galatians, in the Son of God who, you got to know these things, he loved me, mm -hmm. and he gave himself for right. me. And it's the faith in that that carries me into this new life, which is not just a life on this planet, but it's eternal life. Well, part of, part of that, as you mentioned, the things he's going to do for me, I've also got to have faith in what has already been provided to me. Yes, sir. And, and part of that is the defeat of sin in my life. Mm -hmm. He defeated sin on the cross according to Colossians 2, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. There he made an open show. He defeated the enemy. So he not only took the guilt of sin, I should not be guilty of my past anymore, but he also broke the power of sin. Mm -hmm. And even though he did it, and it's personal, it's for me, it's for you, for so many years, 
knowing God had died for me, I did not understand that the power of sin had been broken. That that power that that sin held on me in my old man mm -hmm. had been crucified and dead. And, and it was no longer to reign or no longer could reign mm -hmm. because of what Christ did. Amen. It's powerless over you. It breaks the curse. Right. It breaks the curse that was affecting you. And it breaks the curse that's going to affect your generations because it was broken off mm -hmm. in the atonement. What Christ right. did at Calvary takes care of. You hear people talk about generational curses and bloodline iniquities. They were atoned for right Right back then. Right. Now, now, we have to accept that. I have to work. believe that. We have to believe it. But when that happens, the work's already done. That's right. what makes it so good. Right. <laughs> it's, you it's know, what is it? Uh, Galatians 3.13 says, you know, the curse had been broken. Christ was made a curse for me. So, so he, you know, he's already taken the curse. Mm -hmm. And, but even though a truth is already there, that's the, that's the first thing in, in this verse 11. Uh, when it says, so, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to read uh, this out of the ESV Bible. Mm -hmm. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin. This version says you, almost, you also must consider yourself. The uh, New King James says, believe you are dead. Right. So, <clears throat> the, uh, or reckon. Reckon is an accounting term. You know, that's you right. add up your figures, that's what you get. But I've got to believe what has been done. Or it's not going to be truth in my life, is it? Mm -hmm. That's right. We always talk about believing that we've got eternal life. But you've also got to believe that you're dead. Right. You've got to believe you're dead to the old life, which means if I'm dead to something, dead men don't hurt. Dead men, you know, they don't go back and do things that they right. used to do before they died. <laughs> right. They're dead. And they're respectfully buried. And there may be a monument uh, set up to remember them. But that is all old it's right. gone that's the past and if we can believe that that's how how certain god has taken our sins away and that's how certain that right. the old man is completely gone it's just as if somebody was a corpse and laid into a tomb well that's part of the reason that people by not believing this people are not believing that their sins were totally completely atoned for mm -hmm. So they still keep reviving. I reckon this is one of the way, best way, I don't know or not. But people are more sin conscious than they are Christ conscious. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that comes out from a conversation a lot of times is the sin consciousness of the individual that you're talking about. Well, I don't know about that. I know who I was. I know what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always past instead of alive unto God, because, you know, that's what he's saying here in verse 11. Uh, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin. Right. I've got to consider myself dead to sin before I can be alive, alive. to God. That's right. That's right. You've got, to be, you've got to have the faith to believe that that part of you has died before you can even believe that the resurrected part of you or the new life. The new life that come. I'm going to live. So if I don't get that truth, if I don't settle that truth in my life first, that no matter what I've done, no matter who I used to be, that's the old dead man that was taken care of at salvation. You know, religion doesn't really teach you that that happened. Correct. And that's one of the problems. That's the problem had. I was. Religion had for will so teach long. you that. Oh, you got to watch yourself, you know, right. before this comes back on you and this is going to come back and this is going to creep back in your life. And, oh, you got to be careful that this don't come. And I understand. And, and, and what you defeat it by doing this, by doing this, by doing this. And the this. more attention you give it, the more power you give it. Right. If it's really and truly dead, you don't think about it anymore. Mm -mm. Other than to m memorialize the fact that God's delivered you from it. But you don't go back and worry it, that something from that dead casket is going to come back up out of there right. and it's gone it's dead and that's what you have to know about your old life the old man is totally gone and right. those habits addictions all the things that went away when that old man passed away when that old man died those habits and addictions and those kind of things can forever be dead in your life yeah. 
And if, in fact, you face things, it does not mean that the salvation that you once knew is gone. Hmm. That's what the very yeah. next part of that verse means, is once you understand that that death happened, you can understand that life has happened. Right. And now you're coming back into the full life of, you know, eternal life of Jesus Christ. There's no way that I'm going to have any semblance of John 10.10, 10, the abundance life, until I recognize and believe this fact. Mm -hmm. So where's the grace in this? The grace in this, when we're talking about the five graces of Romans 6, 11 through 13, is the grace in this is that the ruling power of sin has been done away with by another, mm -hmm. by my substitute, by another. I am not the one that has to generate the power to defeat sin in my life. Uh, you know, the Christian world really bought into a government hype, and that's really all it was, was a hype. Years ago, when, when, when the government started saying, all you got to do is say no to, to drugs. Mm -hmm. Say no to drugs. You know, and, and so, you know, just say no to sin. If you're dead, sin is is not going to be out here. You know, to to me, a lot of time, temptation is like a fisherman's lure. Throws out and see if a fish is going to bite it. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way you get to be a 17-pound bass is that <laughs> you can recognize <laughs> a lure from the real a <laughs> lure from a real worm, lure from a meal. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but Satan is going to continue to tempt, but temptation is not a sin. Uh, and I just look at it and say, mm -mm, I'm dead to that. Uh, your temptation doesn't even give me a thrill or anything else. You know, be why? Because I'm alive to God. Absolutely. He, he's my life now. Even when and if, if and when you are caught in the snare of the enemy. I mean, we have an advocate right. now. We have a full-time attorney who's already standing before the judge to say, you know, your blood's already covered him. Right. So, I mean, there, it's not to say, and again, people would like to take the grace message to the far extreme and say, you know, this is a, who gets to go to hell, you know, because right. everybody's saved. Now. And that's not what it's talking no. about. W what it's saying is for that person who is abiding in the vine, that person who is living it every day, you're not, you don't have to be tortured by the memory right. of your past, right. for it is dead. It is gone. It is forgotten. God has forgotten. He looks at you as a newborn, new, alive individual, and your past is dead. And it, that all happened before you was ever naturally born. That is the biggest reason that you will hear Christians pray, Father, I know I'm not worthy. If we don't understand that we are worthy, you know, our worth comes from what was paid for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I am as worthy as the blood of Jesus because that is what was paid for me. Mm -hmm. So for a Christian to say, God, I'm not worthy to come before you, then <clears throat> I'm really telling the Father that your son's blood has not made me worthy. Come on, really. To come before you because I am as worthy and as righteous as the blood of Jesus has made me worthy and righteous. Mm -hmm. So for me, <clears throat> it, it just, I just cringe when I, it, it's a false humility. Absolutely. That, you know, oh, I'm not worthy, Father. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't need a mansion. Just give me a, a, a little cabin on the backside and I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Why? His blood bought this for me. His blood bought to put me, God put me in Christ. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians one thirty, Because of the finished work of Christ. So why am I not worthy? And why do people not believe they are worthy? Because when we say that, we're saying that the atonement was incomplete. Right. Didn't do it. And, and it reminds me, it, it kind of is birthed out of the old time, uh, and I say Pentecostal, but it could be any religion. I came up old time Pentecostal, that way back when, when humility equaled 
righteousness. Mm -hmm. So the more humble mm -hmm. and the more broke and the more poor and you just struggling, we're struggling every day just to make it good glory. You know, we're going to hold on to Jesus comes. We're going to hold and, the fort. Yeah. We're, they even a song. To, to <laughs> we have hold plenty the fort. of songs about that too. <laughs> and, and I love it, you know, that part of it. But when you start realizing, wait a minute, that's a defeatist mentality. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of, I believe it was Francis Frangipane, but it was some, one of the authors in a book I was reading. He talked about he stepped into a time of prayer when he just he felt himself enter into the very glory of God. And he said he fell to his knees and began to repent. And uh, he said God spoke to him and said, you selfish child. And he, then he was stunned and he said, stand to your feet. So he stood up and he said, uh, Lord, why am I selfish? And he said, you stepped into my presence and all you can think about is yourself. I'm sorry, I've done this, I've done that, please yeah. forgive me. God said it isn't about you. You're in my presence now. Right. All of that stuff doesn't matter. Right. And that's to me, is a perfect example of this eternal life here we're talking about. Once you are born into that, we, that's all we have to focus on. Right. And, and it, well, he knows we're frail humanity. He knows that on our own we're nothing. <clears throat> but the fact that we reiterate, instead of saying we're not worthy, we can say we're worthy. Sure. We're worthy sure. by the blood. We're worthy by the blood. How much more worthy can you be made than the blood of Jesus. Absolutely. But I've got to believe that. Got to believe it. I've got to reckon that in my life, even though it's true positionally, it's got to be true conditionally. I've got to know that that is where I am. And I reckon the biggest thing, one of the biggest things is, is my thinking has got to arise or come up to my position. Mm -hmm. If my thinking does not arise to my position, that God has made me in Christ, I am going to have the mentality that I'm not worthy of anything and I have to beg God for everything. So when I beg him, I'm trying to get him to do something that he doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And you know. And that gives back to the, especially, it, it gives way to atheists and agnostics. It, it's the kind of thing that they look at and say, why are you having to beg your God to mm -hmm. forgive you? If you claim he's already done it, they already see this, what we're trying to right. read. They see that. But they look at it, of course, they're looking at it from a, from a, a skeptical viewpoint. But they, it also helps uh, undergird their doubt in God. If we're constantly having to beat ourselves and become martyrs and self-mutate right. because we, you know, we're, or mutilate, I mean, because we're so, you know, uh, sin prone. Sin conscious instead of this. Christ conscious. Instead of Christ conscious. With if we walk through this thing with the victory of Jesus Christ, make a mistake, you have an advocate, keep going. You, you've got to, you know, don't, in other words, you can't focus on the failure because whatever we focus on is... It's is, going to become true in my life. That's where we're going to go yeah, ahead. That's yeah. what's going to, it's going to guide us into that right. end is when we focus on it. So we have to focus on the fact that Jesus Christ paid it all. Right. And that there's no sin you could imagine that could separate you from mm. the love of God mm. if you only believe. So the first grace that we mentioned in, in and I'm just going to pick up my notes here, uh, in, in verse 11, it says, Believe you are dead to your sin nature and alive to Christ, alive to God. I've got to believe that is real for me individually, personally. Uh, I've got to have that established in my life. You know, Paul would go to the Galatians and say, you know, I'm amazed at how quick you are so soon removed from the gospel that I taught you. You know, why did you move from him? Why did you move from the Holy Spirit that wooed you in? Why did you move your faith to something else? Don't you know who you are in Christ? That's what he was really mm -hmm. challenging. Have you forgotten who you are in Christ? Do you not know how Christ has, what he has done for you? And are you not established in that truth? Are you not rooted and grounded in that truth? Uh, I must believe that the mastery of the sin nature <clears throat> was broken by the shed blood of Christ. Amen. That sin nature was broken and dealt with. My old self who I was in Adam was crucified, put to death in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what you were just mentioning. Amen. My old self, the person I was in Adam was crucified, 
And now I can be alive unto God in Christ. Uh, it says, uh, verse 10 in, in that same declares that Jesus is dead. And let me read, go back and read verse 10 uh, in, in Romans chapter 6. It says, for the death he died, talking about Jesus, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives unto God. So I've got to believe that he died once for my sin. Amen. One time. Yep. If I commit a sin five years from now, he's already atoned for it. You don't it. have to go back and re-die. For no. Uh, he didn't die for sins from Adam up until the cross, and that was it. And that, And then he's... Some people think, well, then he's going to have to come back at the end of end of this age and die for sins from the cross to his next cross. See, no, it's all encompassing past, past, present, and future, and people get bent out of shape with that future part. That's because we number sin. Right. We make sin a deed. Right. And it was not a deed. Sin is a condition. And he came and died for that condition, whether it affected Adam or whether it affects a child that's not even born yet. He died for that condition. condition. And he is going to atone for that. And it wasn't for a sin that I commit as if it's a single sin that I, I've done 17 sins and I need to do so many, right. whatever. It's not that. It's the, the deed or the uh, condition of sin in my life has been atoned for. Now, if I choose to live with that sin in my life, I've made an eternal choice right. to right. to to be in, in, and I have eternal death, not eternal life, and it would be my own. Well, it, it's a reason that in Romans six and, and and most of Romans, but especially Romans six, every when sin is mentioned, ninety nine percent of the time it's singular, mm -hmm. because it goes back to sin nature sin. and original sin. That's exactly right. It, he died for the condition, mm -hmm. not the deed. Right. You know. Uh, we hope you. Uh, We'll take what has been presented to you tonight, maybe uh, study it, look at the scripture again, do your own uh, study of the word. Hope we challenge you to, in, and encourage you to go to your word and to believe God has already done what his word says he has done. I do not have to produce the promises of God in my life. Let his given body, his blood shed, the grace that was given, let that be the rule in my life. I am dead unto sin once, and I'm alive unto Christ. We thank you for joining us. We're out of time, and we thank you for yours. Continue to watch Not Without Blood. Not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry Sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.